Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our O Life Social Series. My name is Leslie John. I am so pleased to be your host for this series that we have really had a wonderful lineup of guests. We continue today. We're going back to the kitchen because we have a gentleman who has been with Oceana Cruises from the very beginning. He has what we call a sweet job because on board our ships, on board our ships, our chefs have many, many different uh, job specifications. This man is in charge of the bakery, the pastries, all those wonderful uh, items that we conclude a meal with. I was actually going to get a croissant to have it here during this session. So if I can only uh, dream about it with the help of our next guest from Portugal, would you please welcome Jose Antonio de Costa Silva. Jose, good morning on my time. Good evening on your time. Good morning for you and uh, good afternoon for myself. <laughs> so we can say bon dia? Bon dia, yes, bon dia. Yeah. Yes, of course, bon dia. It's uh, great to see you. Thank you. That's my pleasure to talk to you after a long time, but yeah. we meet a lot of times on the ship, so we are all timers on the it, on board. We are. We are. <laughs> yes. After the last 18 years, our paths have crossed all the time, and you are, you are uh, so valuable to the whole enjoyment of guests being on board, their dining experience, because what they have from you, again, we start off in the morning with those croissants, with all those great pastries, with coffees that are in all the different stations. Then it was lunchtime, the dessert, and the evening, it just continued room service, on and on and on. This is the first question before I start talking about your past. How much butter is consumed on a, on a let's say, a 10-day cruise? How much butter? You know, I know you're going to ask me this question. <laughs> Uh, you know, a day we use about, uh, just for pastry and bakery, 200 pounds per day. So, hey. per day, yes. Uh, of course, we, may, we work 24 hours, uh, like the baker, like you say, for the croissant, for the pan au chocolat in the morning, uh, for the pastry, all the cookies we prepare there on board, like uh, we prepare everything on board. So, we need to produce. So, it's a lot of butter every day. And yeah. the baker for making all the pastries for the morning would be in the kitchen at what time? Basically, we, we work 24 hours, okay? So I have teams to work during the night and then team working during the day. So basically, we divide the teams to make, uh, to have the time for them to take a rest, to start again. So we never stop. We have a team start the night shift, let's say at 10 in the night, all these uh, Danish muffins, all these croissants, uh, all the breads for the breakfast, all everything for everywhere. And you start at 10 in the night and you finish like around 5 in the morning. Then you take a break and you come another team. So produce the bread for lunch, all these baguettes, uh, the baguette we will make on board. So it's, it's a good organization. I must say it's a good organization. That's why Everything's come so perfect. 24 7. 24 7 in operation. 24 7. Jose, I know you're in Portugal. You were born in Porto, uh, yes. Portugal, where they make the wonderful port wine. Wonderful port wine. It was always a, right? Yes, and you're right. And actually, one of the wines you have on board is the Fonseca, the port wine Fonseca. Uh, all our guests you can see, and uh, I try sometimes, <laughs> but it's very close from where I live, so it's, uh, it's a very nice wine, and uh, you have all the vineyards, and it's a beautiful place, yes. So you had some options growing up. At, at the age of 15, you decided you wanted to go work in a pastry shop. Is that correct? You could have gone to a Porto shop and got to a port wine, but you chose pastry. What led you? to that uh, path? Actually, it's a very long, it's a long story and short. So, yes, I started with 15 years old to work in one bakery shop in my hometown. 
uh, I was too young to start to work, but that's when I started to learn how to make the breads, basically. Only the bread. So I was a baker in this shop and I work until uh, 19, 18 years in this shop to make all the breads, our breads, Portuguese breads, yes, nothing special, but it was our special from here. And that's when one day I decided to fly to London to find a better condition, better job. And when I arrived in London, yes, no job, no place where to stay. So I need to find a job somewhere. And I, uh, then someone helped me to find a job in one pastry shop. So that's when I start to learn how to make pastry. Now, actually, I start there to work a pot washer. A pot washer in a bakery? Yes, bakery and pastry shop in London. Because uh, I need to work. So that's what I, that's why sometimes we pass the day, uh, during the day in the, on the ship is very difficult because you get so many nationalities and from so many parts of the world and the people come with different position when it can grow and in Oceania we do that we make the people grow we make the people uh, improve the knowledge on the daily basis so and yes I start to work there in the pot wash after one month yes I start working the oven as I bake the, bake the cakes and it was my interest, start to be interest for me to learn everything different. So after when I know this station, I asked the boss to change, to make all the dennies, all the breads, all the doors. So, and the time is passing. So after one year, I, uh, I start to say to the boss, I want to start to make a nice fresh fruit tart well. So I learned to make the tarts. And when I know the little bit this job already, I want to grow up. So I want to learn more. So mm -hmm. then I start working the two machines uh, to make a chocolate and we got those, the cakes, the curation. So every day I have uh, special orders to prepare, uh, special cakes with the chocolate. And I was, I was enjoying a lot to do this. And, well, what's uh, interesting is that as, uh, as a child at 15, you started in a bakery, then you progressed and went to London. I always find it interesting talking to so many of our European crew that are on board that they will choose, if they're in Spain, they will choose maybe to go to Italy. Uh, and, yes. find it. and in France, they'll go to London or maybe they go to, uh, to Amsterdam. It's a very interesting choice. Why London over any of the other cities in Europe? Actually, it was London because it was a friend of mine. He was working there and he was offered the job to me and uh, me, I wanted to have a better condition of life. So, uh, and I, I say, I must take a risk. I go and I go and be, actually it was a risk really because uh, this, my friend actually now have a job for me. So then I need to find a job by myself. And that's from there, I start to learn all my pastry knowledge, everything. And, uh, one day that's uh, all the people where I work in this shop, we finish a job and we go out and I start to read the newspaper and I see in the right corner, work on the ship, job to go work in the ship. And me, I just take a piece of this newspaper and I, next day I call and he offered to me a job as assistant pastry. So, and then I go to the ship to work on the ship as assistant pastry. And I start to get uh, involved. If you ask me how to make pastries, Portuguese pastries, I don't know. <laughs> but what are, I, I know that when we're in Portugal and we have a marvelous dinner out or a lunch out, generally we will have flan, will be yes. a, a dessert of yes. choice. Yes, uh, yes, he's one, he calls please. a pastel de nata. Pastel de nata is like a custard with a puff pastry. So he, it's very famous. Uh, actually, last time I was in, the, in one of the ships, and he was in Bali and I go out and I found one small shop selling pastel de nata for made in Portugal. So I was, yes, and this is very famous. So that's one of the, the pastries we use here in Portugal and everybody like it, especially in the morning with the coffee. Uh, it's very, very, very nice. Crispy and fresh, little bit warm. I can say if you take a coffee, your cappuccino in the morning, 
and you can eat one, two, or maybe even more. So, yes. You know, it's interesting because we had uh, Frank Garanger. Uh, we interviewed him, and it's amazing to me that you as a pastry chef, Frank Garanger, who is eating so many wonderful, I mean, making and dining on so many delicious things, that you both stay so fit. Uh, actually, yes, no. <laughs> Me, I, I, you know, basically, I need to, we need to try, we need to taste what the, the people doing, what we're doing, uh, to make sure all the, we now make any mistake uh, to offer to the guest, okay? Is, this is the, the one of the most important things, is to make sure if I make a chocolate mousse, to make sure the chocolate mousse is nice, smooth, when you eat, you, you know, you enjoy. And that's our goal when we, we are a team and uh, sometimes when we meet all together on the ship, we make a lot of the tastings in all the food, uh, start pastries, bread, uh, Danish in the morning, uh, curaçao in the morning, uh, uh, the bread with the cheese. Uh, when you drink a glass of wine, you take the baguette with a little bit cheese. So this, that's when you see if the bread is good if, the, if it's the wine is going good with this uh, cheese, if not, we make all this taste on board to make sure the guests will get to the proper quality. I love that everything on board is made from scratch. What, what changes or how have you seen your job evolve over these past many years? Is the technique any different uh, from preparing a, 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 a pie or a, a pastry as it was when you started what it is today uh yes uh, this of course you have techniques to do it when you prepare the doughs and uh, prepare the dough uh, if you need to mix a lot if you need to mix less uh, uh, yes and we need to train the people also this is interest when you show the the our crew uh, how to make, how to prepare. So this is one of the, our goals, is to make sure and to, to show the person what he needs to do and to come out with a good quality. So when I make a tart, yes, I enjoy, because every day we try to make it better. So we enjoy and sometimes we build a team like that. Uh, we make a cake or we make a tart or a pie, like you say, uh, today you make one decoration the top, uh, tomorrow we make different. Uh, uh, we every day we try to do something nice and more attractive for your eyes. So, and the pastries is like this. They're beautiful, they're works of art. Absolute, where you go to tea time and you see all the pastries uh, and the way they're decorated, uh, they're, each one stands out on its own. I have to ask you, Jose, because so many of us, uh, when you think about making a, a pie crust from scratch or making a baklava or making and having to deal with different doughs, filo dough, and to, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people can get very nervous and their first reaction is, I'll go out and buy a store bought frozen crust. What can you say to us that uh, can say, don't worry about it, just work with the dough. When, the pros and cons of trying to make a, a fresh homemade crust. Uh, when you make a fresh uh, homemade crust, it, uh, you know, I can give you an example. When you make a dough for to make your pie, if you make a dough now, we use uh, the flour, of course, you use the butter. And when you put in the fridge, you can, when you bake the taste, you now feel the frozen. You feel like a, it's a fresh homemade the dough. So mm. this it give you different taste. Uh, when you use a frozen dough, sometimes you feel the taste from the fridge. Uh, it's totally different. That's why we there in Oceania we do everything from the scratch. Start from tarts, from uh, the dough for the pie, the the blue castell, you call a blue castell, that's one of the dough. We put a baking powder inside to make it a little bit uh, more dry and soft when you eat it. The cookies, we make the cookies, like you mentioned for the tea time. We prepare the dough tonight, 
and tomorrow we bake because when you make the cookies you need to go a little bit on the fridge to make them a little bit hard after to give a shape to the cookie so all this we when it's fresh you feel the difference when you eat it so and this that's what we build day every day well we have so many uh different options when as we travel the world you have options to try so many different spices, so many different combinations of ingredients. What are your favorite ingredients to put together? Do you love working with chocolate? Do you love working with fresh fruit? I mean, what are, what are the two ingredients, three, four, from around the world that you love working with? Basically, you know, uh, like you talk about fruits, I love when you go around the world and you find a, a fruit from the place where we go. So we can make something, it can be a passion, it can be mangoes. When, when we go to French Polynesia, we get a nice fresh mango from outside, a nice fresh pineapple. We can prepare a nice smooth in the morning. We can make a nice mousse. The taste, the banana, when you go out and you find the, the nice banana in, this, uh, in these countries where we visit and we buy, we go to, Madagascar, we find a nice vanilla. When we get the vanilla beans, so we prepare a nice vanilla mousse with the fresh vanilla beans. It give you the aroma we give you in the mousse, the taste, the, the, the flavors. Of course, then we go to Europe, we go outside. Uh, we found in Greece, we find a nice, uh, like when you make an hour baklava, because we make our baklava more, but if you go outside, you buy some nuts, we see different shops and we we have different ideas to prepare on board. Uh, Spain, we can go outside, you can eat a nice creme catalana. So when we make our catalan on board, because we have also on the ship, we always uh, pick up these flavors, what we try outside. And to in these countries, like we have now the taste of the world. So we have one dessert from different countries countries uh, like the breads like in the main galley with the food or with another food we have uh, all this in the menu so we need to to pick up special flavors but yes this vanilla uh, fresh vanilla fresh fruits that's basic what I like when we go in different places and we go outside and you buy uh, Brazil we go out we buy some fruits we and this makes difference when you make a nice dessert for your dinner to be served with exotic fruits from Shoreside. Jose, do you have a favorite dessert to make? On the ship? <laughs> well, on the ship and at home? No, at home, actually, I just do a cake when um, my mom make a cake and I see too much uh, flour everywhere. So I say, okay, I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> on the ship, yes, on the ship, we actually all the desserts, is, it's a high quality, so I'm proud to do all of them and to know and to teach the people what the way how to prepare it. So I know have favorite, I like uh, one of our desserts, you have, we have a chocolate Vulcano. It's a kind of chocolate because it's very nice combination. It's a milk chocolate with some passion fruit inside. So when you eat the, the Vulcan, the chocolate is like a pyramid with mm. some chocolate. You see this dessert before also, and you eat it. So it's come out the lava, you call the lava because it's the passion inside. So it's a good combination. The acidity of the passion fruit with the milk chocolate is beautiful. I love this dessert and it's one of uh, our signature desserts on Oceania. But that volcano dessert and so many of the other desserts looks like it takes so much time to actually create. And you have those volcanoes, you have other desserts from the tartlets uh, to the cakes, the gatos. Uh, how do you manage in the kitchen? There's a lot of people working. You have a lot of different uh, uh, apprentices, sous chefs, etc., making their way and trying to do everything. How do you get that assembly line in order on our ships? In our ships, so yes, we have a big team. Uh, it, it's very nice organization. Okay, when I organize the, the team on the pastry, yes, I have uh, the ice creams, example. We prepare all the ice creams for the day. 
fresh homemade ice cream. So I have one person to do the ice cream during the night. Uh, every station we have different person assigned to do uh, different jobs. Let's say you have two persons to prepare only the dough. All the crusts uh, for the doughs, for any tarts, for everything, all the cookies. Then you have one person to prepare all the mousse, chocolate mousse, vanilla mousse, passion fruit. We, we divide the job by stations and by teams. So it's not complicated, but uh, yes, it's a good, we need to have a very good organization. Uh, and then the different people, we work with different nationalities again. Uh, so we need to, to train the persons the way it should be and to make this, this person happy and proud what you do. So when the person is proud about what you do and uh, enjoy to do a moors, next time the moors will become better because you put all your love in this job. So and this that's my job to keep also the person motivated and the team around me and in the pastry, the chefs, the sous chef, assistant pastry, CDP, uh, all this, the red baker, uh, everything. So yes, it's not easy, but it's very good. We have a very good team and we make the person grow also. Like you say, you have, uh, people come on the ship and you start in the pot washer. And then I need one person in the pastry and I start to train the person to do pastries. So when the guy, uh, the person is going to be proud because he want to grow. So he's, he want to learn. So it's very easy for me or for the chefs on board to give him a training because this person is really interested in what you do. And that's when we grow up. I remember one of our guests during, uh, uh, Galatee, and they said, "Boy, this must been this must have been stressful in the kitchen when you have all those desserts that you are creating throughout the day. Can it be stressful in the baking area?" Uh, sometimes we stress, but uh, I'm always say to the team, and when I'm on board, especially when I'm on board, I say, uh, "Panic with the class." So that's mean, if I'm in panic, but no, no stress, everything will become good. So uh, it's very important to keep the things uh, down and you keep yourself. And when you work like that, the job is going and you'll see the people around you, you see it's going to be already on time and everything is going to be uh, perfect. So if you put panic, sometimes we, Press, yes, because it's a lot of cakes to set up, decorate. Uh, the, after the guests, you're going to see the cakes. I want to be nice, put a nice cake in the buffet. And it's very important for the, the guests to see it's nice. But behind, yes, we, we struggle sometimes, but when everybody work together, everything will be perfect. So that's what we, is very important. We keep the, the good motivation and good atmosphere in the team. Jose, again, in front of the house, when you are doing cooking demonstrations, which our guests love so much, any stress involved? Uh, no, actually not, because when you do something like that, it's to make fun, to show our guests uh, something new and to, to answer some questions if they have, if they know how to do it. So most, if you stress, you know, nothing become perfect. So it's better you be uh, the way you are. So just no stress. But yes, sometimes we stress to make sure everything is already on time. It, but this is normal, is in every right. job you But it's so, those cooking demonstrations are so much fun to be a part of and, and I guess, love it. Guess want copies of them. They want to see you working with another chef and it's always I, a, a and then you make it, I love it. And then we make a jokes. Then uh, we try the, the mousse, we try the tiramisu, uh, and then we drink a glass of wine. So this is a, it's a good atmosphere. I love it. Perfect. Now there is of course the, uh, the new healthy cuisine and the plant-based 
foods. Has that been a challenge as a pastry chef with the new plant-based menu? Uh, I must say this in Frank, uh, Mr. Frank, he was one of the developing all these recipes. Of course, with my help, uh, we build, uh, he built uh, the, the rest of the food and I start to work on these recipes. Yes, it's, uh, it's a good choice. The desserts are excellent. Uh, but it was not difficult uh, because when you have the proper products, uh, everything is possible. So uh, yes, it's a very, it was a very positive, uh, I must say a very good positive from the company to put uh, this uh, choice, this alternative desserts uh, for our guests. Uh, I, because we cannot use uh, sugar, regular sugar, we cannot use uh, it's a lot of ingredients we cannot uh, use, you cannot touch, and, and it's more complicated, but then we need to have a special place where to prepare and uh, assign a special person only for that. But it's not a, it's a challenge in the beginning, then it's going to be work perfect. It is a wonderful menu and a great alternative to uh, so many other desserts. Uh, Jose, do you, if you had one ingredient to choose. One of our guests wanted to know this question. You had one ingredient. Yes. Okay, let's say three. What three? <laughs> one to three ingredients to work with. What would you choose? Uh, ingredient to work. Because somebody said you can have three ingredients. Oh, I, I, to work, I choose, of course, the chocolate. I love to work with the chocolate, yes. Then, of course, the sugar, because uh, I must say the sugar is one of the ingredients important in the pastry. Uh, and then, of course, you have the flour. With the flour, without flour, no matter if it's gluten, if it's rye flour, if it's whole wheat flour, because we have a special flour on board to prepare all this bread. So uh, the flour is one of the products I like to work because with the flour, we can do anything. We can do a nice bread. If you don't have flour, you cannot do it, of course. Then you have a sugar, you can make a show piece. You can work uh, uh, with the chocolate to prepare a nice mousse. I love to work with this product. The chocolate, sugar, sounds good. And flour. And flour, because is I think that's one of the products it's important. It. <laughs> but you have a lot of them, you know. It's, you have a lot, of, we, we work with a lot of good quality of products, so it's very difficult to choose. As you know, we work on the ship, we have the right quality. So, and the right quality of these products, we, it makes us proud to do what we do. On the well, daily basis. Everybody daily applauds. Uh, yes. The kitchen and the, and the chefs and all that you do. Jose, when you decide to go out for the afternoon, or even go out for the evening when you're on the ship and you have a break. What kind of a meal would you like to go out in any place in the world? What is your favorite cuisine? Uh, I'm trying to eat all the time the cuisine or the dessert to try the dessert or the cuisine from the place where we are. If I'm in Africa, I like to eat something done from Africa. So then we get ideas uh, to create something new later on. So if I'm going to Brazil, yes, I like to go to eat a nice churrascaria in Brazil. Of course, then I eat a nice brigadeiro, you call a pastry. So this we I like to eat something from a local place. And this, that's what our guests, I, I think, doing during the traveling when we go around the world is to try different meals and we go out. Uh, when I go out in the afternoon, that's what I try to do, to eat something from the place and to enjoy what I'm doing because our job is not only to work. And that's what sometimes our crew, what we do, going out and enjoy and have fun. So this, that's the most important. Then you come back with different ideas. Even your job will become better. Well, one of my favorite dishes in Portugal is to have frango piripiri and ah, vino verde. Vino verde, yes, I love it. 
Vinho Verde, I love it. You know, uh, even now my brother is going to open a pastry shop and he asked me for assistance. So we need to create always something new. Right, so it runs in the family, pastry. <clears throat> yes, uh, pastry and baker because my brother also is a baker. So now he's going to open a pastry shop. And yeah, it's uh, it beca when like, again, we do what we love. And when we love to do something, we we'll be proud about what we do. Just to be clear, uh, because I, I'm sure that uh, so many people would want to know, what is the difference between a pastry chef and a baker? A baker? And uh, a pastry chef. Pastry chef, uh, actually a pastry chef on board, that's when we train the, that's the person in charge to hold the station. So when you become a pastry chef, you need to have a knowledge about the baker and you need to have, uh, of course, knowledge about the pastry. So you call, this is the chef, the pastry chef is involved. When you are a pastry chef, you do, you must know how to do all this. So the baker, the baker is different because we have a lot of uh, different uh, breads to produce on board Oceania. So we have one red baker on board in charge of the baker, but under the, the pastry chef. So the pastry chef is the one he really need to, to train, to show how to make uh, the whole wheat bread, the, the, the focaccia, the fresh focaccia we do every night, the Jack's bread, uh, the baguettes, the curaçao in the morning, the pan uh, all this, what is coming out, the pastry chef is fully charged to take care about this. Of course, and the pastry, of course. You just brought a great memory to my mind when you said pan au chocolat. Always, always the best in the morning. Hey, it's amazing. And then when you arrive in buffet, you see nice and crispy, sometimes a little bit warm. Yes, it's one of our uh, favorite on board. And of course, the curacao. You know, this has been a pleasure. We've had a chance to really delve into the kitchen and to talk to many of our chefs. Uh, I said it at the very beginning, you have the sweetest job because you are dealing with all those great ingredients and putting smiles on our guests' face. And, and this that's what I... makes me proud. That's what you make me proud. You know, when I work and I go around and the guests say, how you do that? Uh, how come you're so skinny? I need to try, but... <laughs> I, look, I keep myself because it's a lot of things delicious. So uh, this uh, it's one of uh, the best thing when you go around and you see all our guests happy and enjoy the cruise and enjoy the food, enjoy the pastries in the morning, the other food around the ship, uh, the crew when you go around and the smoothies in the morning when you go and you drink your fresh smoothie. Uh, all this it make you happy and that's well we miss we miss all being on board together and when we are all back together again the final question jose what is your favorite port of call to sail into around the world what is your favorite port of call to sail into uh, it's difficult because you've been in so many places beautiful place uh, around the world and that's what this job gives you, the opportunity to do that. Uh, I love Australia. Uh, beautiful. Beautiful, yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's very difficult. You've been in Europe, you've been in Asia, you've been in uh, South America, you've been uh, Pacific, you've been everywhere. So it's very difficult to choose one of the places because it's a beautiful place everywhere around the world. I think that is a great answer. There are so many choices that we have to choose from. And we look forward to all being back together again. Jose, stay healthy, stay safe, until we meet again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Obrigado. Thank you. Obrigado. Thank you. Obrigado. Thank you.